What is going on everybody? Just wanted to make a quick video going over some things that have happened over the past day or so. In case you guys didn't notice, my two most recent videos on the NYC tournament were taken down due to a copyright claim and a DMCA takedown order from Coach K, who is the organizer, owner, or whatever title you want to give him, of Compete Forever, who is the organization who put on the New York City tournament. Um, I didn't get any former or any prior messages about my videos before uh, he issued the takedown order. Um, he just straight up issued the order. YouTube took him down and basically the ball's in my court to now either just accept the takedown or to issue a counter notification, which gets into some legal stuff that I'll go into a little later. So I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that's why those videos are no longer there. My NYC a 335 odd meta defense Joel vs AKG spotlight video is still up but it'll likely get taken down as well if he does the same for that video so if you guys want to watch it want to look at it one more time go ahead look at it if you want to download it download it if you want to download it and re-upload it on your channel go for it it's for your use it's for educational purposes I want people to learn about what's going on in the competitive Madden scene and want to help people get better at the game of Madden so definitely use it for whatever you want to use it for now getting into the whole takedown so I got this email right here uh, from YouTube the other day one day ago saying that these two videos uh, were taken down takedown issued by coach K so I know I, I know who coach K is I had heard the name before I know he runs compete forever so I went ahead and emailed him and, and just kind of told him uh, what I thought so I said good afternoon coach K I received your copyright claim from YouTube and I'm reaching out to you in order to ask for a retraction I do not believe that I was wrong in any way when uploading my educational videos breaking down tactics from c top competitive Madden players to people who wanted to learn not only did I commentate and telestrate over the footage but I also only used a fraction of the original I think retraction in these claims would be good for the scene as educating people on competitive Madden and making it more accessible to the public would only grow the community and make it a better place. I believe that we would both like to see competitive Madden flourish for different reasons, but nonetheless we have the best interests of the eSport at heart. The more people who are able to educate themselves as to what tactics the pros are using, the more they feel in the loop with the community and as such are more likely to tune into the tournaments on the weekends resulting in more viewers for your broadcast. I just want to reiterate that I think we share a common goal, which is to help the Madden scene grow and mature. I like to think my videos are helping out a little bit in that regard. At the same time, it is publicity for you as well. If people enjoy the videos, the odds of them tuning into the next live tournament are even greater. I know we share a common goal. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Holden. So just a little background on why I sent that email. Basically, once he issues the DMCA takedown order of my videos, I have two options. Either I can try and contact him personally to reach some type of settlement or get a retraction of the orders or I issue a counter notification. Now, I think I am firmly protected under US law and by the doctrine of fair use. So if you guys don't know what fair use is, fair use is used to protect people or content creators who use copyrighted footage in their own content but transform it and make it something new for different purposes. So there's mainly four different you know points that a court of law will look at when trying to distinguish whether or not something falls under the category of fair use so th those four things right here are the first one purpose and character of the use including whether the use is of a commercial na nature or is for nonprofit educational purposes so of course look at how the party claiming fair use is using the copyrighted work and are more likely to find the nonprofit educational and non -com commercial uses are fair so additionally transformative uses are more likely to be considered fair transformative uses are those that add something new with a further purpose or different character and do not substitute for the original use of the work so I feel like my content my videos if you guys have been watching I've got over 80 videos most of them are breakdown videos from tournaments most of them were from EA this was the first time I'd ever done anything from compete forever never had a problem with this from EA at all I've been doing this since probably March I think so it's been about six months never had a problem with it and all of a sudden you know compete forever has a problem with it I feel like my videos are firmly transformative obviously I'm adding commentary I'm adding telestrations over the video I'm taking the raw material from coach K's stream 
and using it, basically completely changing the genre. It's going from entertainment from the stream, people are tuning into the stream to watch the games and be entertained, to whenever they tune into my breakdown videos, it's not so much entertainment. I'm not trying to entertain you guys, I'm trying to educate and teach people about the game of competitive Madden. So I feel like I'm completely transforming the genre, not only adding commentary, but also telestrations over the video. So I think that firmly falls under their nature of the copyrighted work. Analyze the degree to which the work that was used relates to copyright's purpose of encouraging creative expression. Using a more creative or imaginative work such as novel, movie, or songs less likely to support a claim of a fair use than using a factual work such as a technical article or news item. Little gray area there. I'm not sure exactly where uh, this would fall. Probably more under the umbrella of imaginative work. If they mentioned movies, I guess broadcasts would uh, fall under there as well. So... Uh, I'm not sure 100% where that would fall. Amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So basically saying, how much of it did you use? It was a several hour long broadcast of a two day tournament. And I used a 15 to 20 second clip of a single play uh, from, you know, one of the dozens of games that were broadcast on the stream. And, and, and so I feel like that certainly falls under you know, the amount and substantiality of the portion used, I mean, it's about as little as you can possibly get other than taking a still frame image from the stream itself. So 15, 20 second clip, that's a microcosm, that's a fraction, one one, one, one thousandth of probably even less than that of the stream itself. So I feel like that's clearly the case. It's not like I used half of the stream or something, you know, to, to do my two videos on. So effect of the use upon the potential market or value of the copyrighted work. Like I said in my letter to Coach K, I said in my eyes, me doing these breakdown videos, you know, if I do a breakdown video on a certain play and you guys watch it and say, huh, this looks like it might have been a close game, let me go watch the full gameplay, then you guys go to Coach K's Twitch, you guys go to Coach K's YouTube, watch the full game, watch the ending of the game, whatever it may be. I feel like my videos, if anything, would drive more traffic to his videos if nothing, then I feel like it doesn't affect it at all. My videos have no effect on the market of Coach K's videos. People are going to still tune in and watch the tournament. People aren't going to not watch the tournament and just say, oh, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just watch Holden's breakdowns. Like, that doesn't make any sense because I'm not breaking down a full game. I'm breaking down, you know, one play of these tournament games. So I feel like my, you know, content has zero effect on the marketability of his content so I feel like I'm firmly protected under fair use for these claims now his response was that anyone that plays and compete forever events needs to know that if we're streaming any of their gameplay that we will do all we can to protect the footage from being pirated by tip sites players hate it when tip sites or other players rip stuff from streams they compete on if I wanted the videos to be on tip sites I would have made arrangements for that already but that's not why we stream tournament games not sure how ripping our streams for tips would be great advertising if anything top players would shy away from our events if they know our streams can easily be lurked by tip sites for YouTube I do not want those videos back up, and I don't want this to happen ever again in the future. So, a little tactic, tactic of intimidation right there at the end, which uh, kind of showed me that, you know, he doesn't really 100% know what he's talking about when it comes to fair use. Um, you, it doesn't matter if, you know, you don't want the videos up, uh, that your feelings, you know, have no weight in a court of law it's all about is it does it fall under fair use am i within my legal rights to use the footage which i feel like i clearly am um i understand he said players hate it when tip sites he also used the term tip sites you know four or five times um i cleared this up in my next email back to him obviously i'm not affiliated with any tip site you know any tip site out there whatever madden tips madden daily top madden madden school whatever it may be I'm not affiliated with any of that. All of my videos are only on my YouTube channel. I'm not making money off of them. I'm not selling the videos. I'm not selling ebooks. I'm not selling, you know, exclusive memberships to certain videos. I'm not doing any of that. I'm putting out these videos on my channel for free in my free time as a hobby to try and make a positive impact in the Madden community. That's why I do what I do. So not selling these videos, not making any money off of it. So the tip sites thing kind of goes out the window in my eyes. Um, he, he basically it all comes down to him not liking the way I'm using his content, uh, but that really doesn't have any weight. You know, it it's I mean if he doesn't like how he uses it or how I use it rather, 
I mean, it sucks for him, but I don't see why he doesn't like how I use it whenever I'm using it to educate and hopefully enhance and make the Madden community a better place, which I would think is what he wants, being a prominent member of the community and owning an organization that puts on events within the Madden community. Wouldn't you want the community to be as big as possible, as well educated as possible in the competitive scene so that he gets even more participants, more viewers in his broadcasts whenever they do put on tournaments? That's what I would think. Uh, but obviously it doesn't seem to be the case so then i replied saying coach k with all due respect i'm not a tip site i'm not pirating videos nor am i using it to sell a product i'm using it as educational footage for people who want to learn about the competitive madden scene i believe my videos to be protected under the fair use doctrine for the following reasons and i listed them out just like i just did for you guys I truly do not understand your motives as I feel as though my transformations of tournament footage is bringing positive value to the Madden community and would think anyone involved with the scene would want the same. He then replied saying, if those points were valid, YouTube would have already said so. That's blatantly false. YouTube does not have any say so in this arbitration whatsoever and it's because of the legality of the fact. Basically, anybody can issue a DMCA takedown request on any video they want. YouTube has no say so whatsoever. YouTube immediately takes down the video as long as the request is valid. And then as soon as the request goes through, video gets taken down, then it's the con in the content owner's ball or the ball is in the content owner's court rather to either say, okay, I accept the takedown or I refute and issue a counter notification. If I were to issue a counter notification, then the ball goes back into Coach K's court or the the you know claim the content the original content owner the the person who's you know claiming somebody else copyrighted their work goes back into their court and they can either say okay whatever it's not worth pursuing leave the video up or uh, they have a certain time period to basically uh, make it a lawsuit and get court papers so youtube has nothing to do with this um that that's a blatantly false statement basically another pseudo intimidation tactic in the end it originated from my content and I don't want it being used that way like I said earlier it sucks I know uh, if you don't it's your content you don't want it being used that way but under fair use it can be used that way you know your feelings in a court of law honestly doesn't matter it, it, all that matters is the law the legislation and you know what it says in the doctrine of fair use and you know what US copyright law abides by so it sucks that you know you don't want it being used that way but unfortunately it doesn't matter my reply to that was youtube does not do the arbitration for these matters like i just said they simply process the dmca takedown request it is up to me to usher a counter notification claiming fair use which i will be doing due to the point stated above i said i am sorry that you feel that way however that is not how things work you cannot simply remove someone else's content because you do not like how they implemented yours under fair use that would be like a singer removing a cover of their song because they didn't like how the other person sang it it doesn't work so that's that's completely true it's like if you know Justin Bieber came out with a song someone posted a video of them singing it on YouTube and Bieber doesn't like how they're singing his song he takes down the video you can't do that it's under fair use you can sing the song however you want to as long as you're literally not just posting a video of the song playing and you know completely ripping the audio you can do whatever you want with the song you could you know remix it cover it just how it is it doesn't matter how the artist or how the original content owner likes it or doesn't like it um you know that has no effect so his points just he, he doesn't really have a leg to stand on i clearly feel like my videos fall under uh, the fair use doctrine right here in a book copyright limitations in a three-step test it's it's you know i've been doing a lot of reading right here it says so the notion of transformative use is understood here in the same sense it is used in the context of the u.s fair doctrine with a little notation the use must be productive and must employ the quoted matter in a different manner or for a different purpose from the original so if you remember back i said that basically i changed the genre and went from entertainment to educational a quotation of copyrighted material that merely repackages or republishes the original is unlikely to pass the test if on the other hand the secondary use adds value to the original if the quoted matter is used as raw material which is what i'm doing with his videos transformed in the creation of new information which is what I'm providing with my commentary, new aesthetics, which was what I'm providing with my telestrations, new insights and understandings, which also I am doing with my commentary to help you guys learn about the competitive Madden scene. This is the very type of activity that the fair use doctrine intends to protect for the enrichment of society. So that sentence right there, I think clearly, clearly just blows it out of the water that I am clearly protected under fair use. Now, 
the question is, do I issue the counter notification or not to get my videos put back up? In the end, it is only two videos, maybe three if he gets the third one taken down. Do I think I would easily win the counter notification? Yes, I do. But, however, I think if he was, you know, kind of foolish enough to issue the DMCA takedown request in the first place uh, without even, you know, basically on a just emotional, visceral reaction, not logical at all, not, you know, thinking about, well, it could fall under fair use. He basically just issued the takedown request out of pure emotion because he didn't like how I was using his content, then I think he may actually be, you know, silly enough to go through with a lawsuit um, which obviously he would ultimately lose. There's no way uh, that, you know, I feel like he would come out on top with that. The only thing is, is it worth it? If he does end up going through that, it's probably not worth the headache just for two or three videos uh, to remain up. So I still haven't decided. I'm probably just going to let it be and, you know, let bygones be bygones and not cover the NYC tournament anymore. It sucks for you guys who you know, enjoy watching my videos. It sucks for you guys that maybe didn't see the two videos that were taken down. And it sucks that, you know, there's a lot of really good gameplay and content out there uh, from really high level competitive Madden players that I feel like could have been used as, you know, footage for breakdown videos and to, you know, enhance the Madden community, spread education, and, you know, just, you know, could have been used as really good teaching points. So it does kind of suck. Uh, but like I said, I think, uh, this is the the main reason I'm upset is this is how a prominent member of the Madden community is acting. He's he's acting basically out of pure selfishness and he's, you know, purposely taking down content that was put out to enhance and educate the Madden community for free. You know, I'm not making a dime off of any of this. I'm doing this for free. Like I said, as a hobby in my free time, I work a full time job. I do this in the afternoons and in the mornings. You know, and at night, oh, because I want to make a positive impact in the Madden community because I love Madden as a game. I've been playing it competitively since Madden 2010, at least taking it somewhat seriously since Madden 2010. I love it as a game. I've been following it for a very long time, and I wanted to give back to the community and make a positive impact. So I would have hoped that people in his type of position would have wanted the same for the community, but it seems like he's just interested in himself and basically in his own organization's best interests and not the best interests for the community, which I feel like is what he should be interested in if he wants it to con to continue growing. And, uh, you know, Madden definitely is in its fledgling and in, in its infancy in terms of an eSport, but I would like to see it grow over time. But stuff like this is not a good look to start off, especially when it's coming from prominent members who are, you know, running organizations that put on tournaments. He's an EA game changer, it says in his Twitter bio. So and you've got guys like this who are just blatantly selfish, you know, making calls, calling the shots. What kind of decisions do you think he's making? When it, when it comes down to making a decision that says, okay, do I do what's best for me or do I do what's best for the community? Where do you think he's going to go? I, I feel like after going through this with him, it's it's easily going to be what decision benefits me the most. I need to look out for myself, not for the community. So that's what rubs me the wrong way is when guys at the top just seem to, you know, just not have any responsibility and abuse the power they have at the top of the food chain. But alas, it is what it is. I'm pretty sure, you know, 18 and a half minutes. I've kind of said my piece about it. If you guys continued watching, thank you very much. Uh, for kind of listening to the whole rant, but like I said, um, probably won't be any more NYC tournament videos, so the next tournament, I believe, is towards the end of the month, it might be September, it might be the weekend of the 22nd and 23rd, might be another Challenger event, I think, so, you know, in a week or so, week, week and a half, um, or not this weekend, but next, basically. Uh, we might have some more footage to go ahead and break down, so I'll definitely be delivering those breakdown videos to you guys. Um, I really appreciate all the support. Um, you know, you guys leaving comments, you guys liking the videos, all that stuff. I mean, my subscribers, I hit 1K about a week ago, which is crazy. Um, since it seems like a few months ago, I had, you know, 50. So it's pretty crazy. Thank you so much for the support. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, I've definitely met some really cool people through YouTube. And uh, I, I really, you know, you guys, when you guys comment and say, you know, you like the video or when you guys even comment asking me questions and, you know, we're able to talk about Madden, it really 
it really I like seeing that kind of stuff in the community when when people come together and you know make a positive impact on each other in the community whether it be sharing of knowledge or just talking about a game that at the end of the day we all love and that we all want to see flourish and do well in the world of not only you know selling the game but also in the world of esports and competitive gaming so I really enjoy, or really appreciate all of you guys' support. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you watch this video, once again, I know I keep saying it, but thank you so much. And until next time, guys, take it easy.